everyone and welcome back to one of my videos. So last year my husband and I were looking for a desktop shelf that would house his various electronic devices that were cluttering his desk. But after searching extensively online we didn't find anything that suited his specific needs. At which point Chris was like why don't you just 3D print one? At first I was concerned about the limited size of my printer's build platform and worried that whatever I designed would come out looking ugly and clunky. You know, that lack of confidence way of thinking that almost everyone in existence can relate to. But after quickly modeling and 3D printing the first iteration, I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. After posting it on LinkedIn and posting the CAD files to Thingiverse, I was really shocked at the positive feedback that I got for this design that seemed to be easy to make and was really quick to do. So after I made the first iteration, we used it for a good couple of months, but then unfortunately we started thinking there were bed bugs in our house because we got like bug bites and stuff. And so we had volumetric treatment done in our house, which is like they put a giant heater in your house and they like blast everything. And that's supposed to be like a alternative to like covering your entire house with poison to kill the bed bugs. So the heat treatment ends up killing them like more effectively apparently. So anyway, <clears throat> after having the heat treatment done unfortunately like most of the prints that I had around the house were in PLA and I don't know if you know this but PLA printing material is really easy to melt and so what ended up happening was the first iteration got really warped and kind of melted a bit. So before just printing the same design again, I decided to ask Chris if there was anything that he could think of that I could improve on the shelf design. He mentioned that every time that he has to plug something into the front of one of his devices, that he has to hold the device to stop it from sliding backwards. And then said maybe it would be good if we added a lip to the back of the shelf so that when you plug things in, that even if they slide it like stops it from sliding over the edge and then you don't have to hold it every time you want to plug like say a USB or something like that into the front. I then went ahead and remodeled it with the new lip design. I also made it a little bit wider so that it would better house his UMC 404 HD device. <laughs> Here is a breakdown of the shelves parts and features. Each level is separated into two interlinking halves in order to fit on my printer's build platform. The different levels are modular and interlocked together with magnets for additional stability. One of the levels is open at the back to accommodate for the large plugs coming out of Christopher's UMC 404 device. I made a magnetic cap to cover the bare magnets that are in the middle of the open side. Each shelf half has a lip section at the back to prevent devices from sliding off the edge when buttons are pressed or things are plugged into the front. I made the lip sections separate from the shelf halves so that the top of the shelf halves could be printed flush with the printer's build platform. Here you can see what it would look like if the shelf half and lip section were printed as one piece. 
So because the protruding lip is now creating a gap between the top of the shelf surface and the build platform, the Prusa slicer now has to add support material to support the print there. You can see that in the bright green parts. If I was to print the shelf halves like this, the printing time would go up considerably and the top of the shelf half surface would look rough after removing the support material. This is what it looks like when the lip section is separate from the shelf half. As you can see, the shelf half's top surface is now flush with the build platform. Here is a comparison between the print time of having the shelf half and lip section as one piece versus printing the shelf half and lip sections separately. I made feet that attach to the bottom of the shelf's legs. These feet each have a recess at the bottom that a non-slip bumper can be pasted into. So honestly, physically making this shelf was a bit of a pain in the ass. You think that everything is going to work out fine when you make a 3D model and you're like, okay, great. All I need to do is print it. But then you print it and you test it and you're like, oh, it's not really working the way I thought it would. Printing all the parts took more than a week to do because I had to reprint and remodel some of the parts and I had technical issues with my 3D printer. While printing the bottom left half of the shelf, the PLA material that the printer was using had almost run out. So mid-print I had to pause the printer and then load a new spool of PLA material so that the printer could finish printing the part. After loading the new spool of material, I noticed that the filament was purging really weirdly out of the nozzle. When the filament comes out like this, it's referred to as curling. I let the printer finish printing because it seemed to be printing okay despite this issue. So after the printer had finished printing the part, I loaded some cleaning filament hoping that if something was blocking the nozzle it would come out. Unfortunately nothing changed after I tested the printer again. So I got on the 24 hour chat that Prusa has for technical support and they suggested doing a cold pull. For the record, I really hate doing cold pulls because they're a pain in the ass to do, but what they were saying made sense, so I did a cold pull. By the way, if you've never heard of doing a cold pull, it's kind of like when you go and you get hot wax put up your nose and yanked out to get rid of hairs. Cold pulling helps remove old pieces of filament and stuff that's clogging your printer's hot end. And by the way, the hot end is the part of the printer that basically melts the PLA or whatever printing material that you have loaded and then basically extrudes it. So unfortunately, after doing about five cold pulls, nothing seemed to change in terms of the filament curling issue. So I started talking to a different person on the technical chat support and had my first bad experience. And I don't really want to get into the details of what happened because I still really like the company. There's been countless, like a countless number of times that they've helped me fix issues with my printers. Um, they give a 24 hour service, which is really nice. And I mean, it's just one person that I had a bad experience with, so I don't want that to paint the company in a bad light because I still really like the company. So after realizing that whoever I was talking to on the technical support chat wasn't able to help me fix my problem, I posted my question on Prusa's help forum and someone answered me the next day. They mentioned that the nozzle might be damaged and to try replacing it. So this made sense to me because these nozzles are only made to last about six months of consistent printing and I had been using mine for like three years. 
So while waiting for the new nozzle, I decided to just go ahead and finish printing the rest of the parts so that I could get this project done. Luckily all the parts came out okay and the curling issue didn't really have an effect on the printing quality. After I finished printing the first set of parts, I started gluing the halves together and inserting the magnets. Please excuse the blurry footage. Unfortunately, I managed to insert the magnets between the top and middle levels in the incorrect directions. And once you've inserted and glued these magnets into the parts, it's pretty much impossible getting them out without completely damaging the prints. So I had to reprint the two top halves. So with the lip sections being separate, I thought it would be neat to make them magnetic and detachable so that I could try out different iterations of the lip later. But unfortunately after testing the magnetic lip sections, it was clear that this was not going to work. When I tried plugging in a USB port from the front of a device, what ended up happening is the device pushed up against the lip and then pushed it off the edge of the shelf half. I made the feet that attach to the bottom of the shelf magnetic as well, but like the lip sections, they had a similar problem. They kept sliding out from under the shelf whenever the shelf was pushed around on a desktop surface. So with these two major design flaws, I started thinking about the fastest and easiest way to get a working shelf. I didn't feel like spending another week or more remodeling and reprinting all the parts for this video. Super gluing the lip sections and feet directly onto the shelf seemed to be a viable option, albeit a little bit lazy and perhaps a bit crude. So after I super glued the lip sections and feet on, it seemed to work pretty well. I was just a bit sad that I had wasted so many magnets in the process. So I'll probably remodel this shelf and reprint everything. But I'm kind of over this project right now, so that's for a future video. With that said, here is the final product. I don't think it looks too shabby and Chris seems to be happy with it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!